Tonight's kit build is accompanied by Stone Angel Brewing's Nocturne English Dark Mild. Tasting notes on the can describe it as a session strength ale with notes of toasted hazelnuts, chocolate, and coffee. A nice mild session beer that should pair nicely with a chilled out kit build. And that kit is one that's been chilling out in my kit bin for a while with all these intriguing looking seven segment LEDs. So it is a frequency counter and crystal tester kit. This kit has been around for quite a while. I remember seeing Julian Eilert build it several years ago and I figured it would be a handy thing to have around the place. Not that I test crystals all that often, but so in the kit we have five seven segment LEDs. We have a chip socket. We have a chip, which is a PIC microcontroller, a PIC 16F628 for those playing along at home. And we have a whole raft of resistors, which I assume are related to the LEDs. Some assorted other resistors. We have four diodes. We have some a bunch of small capacitors. We have a variable capacitor. You don't see those very often. There is a crystal in it, a 20 megahertz crystal specifically. I'm not sure if that's a test victim or if that is there to clock the pick. We'll find out. And we have some transistors, push button, bunch of little capacitors, a power jack, and of course the board itself. What the kit doesn't come with is instructions or a schematic or any documentation at all. So we have to trust the silk screen and my ability to read the silk screen accurately. Based with previous experience on doing kits on video, you have to pay particular attention to the orientation of the three transistors and the fact that they are all different. A 9018, a 7550, and a 9014. But everything is marked where it's supposed to be. The only thing I'm not sure about, there is, there is room for a four pin header there, a three pin header there. There is one three pin header in the kit, but I don't see anything else. So if that doesn't uh, present itself, obviously later, I'm going to have to check the, uh, the listings on various websites. Now this kit is available at all the usual suspects. I found it on AliExpress. I found it on Banggood. I found it on eBay and there's a dozen other places you can get it as well. I will probably reference them for photos of it in case I get confused by what's going on. Yeah, I think everything's pretty well labeled. I shouldn't have any trouble if I'm paying attention. I spent a long while exploring different soldering holders and this seems to be the one that I'm settling on the most often. Um, it's fairly versatile. It lets you hold the board in any direction and of course it'll lock down so the board doesn't move if you don't want it to but you can loosen it up and spin it around very handy tool so just to minimize thinking too hard i'm going to start with this batch of 1k resistors actually i hope they're 1k resistors they're the only ones that there's multiples of and those go there and those are the current limiting resistors for the led segments Colorblind me probably should check these resistors though just to make sure they didn't screw me over. Yep, 0.990k. That is close enough to a 1k for me. I used to slide these things out of the tape that holds them together just to preserve the length of the lead, but you always end up trimming them off anyway. So now I just chop them off. That way you don't get tape goop on the leads as you pull them across. And then there's one more 1K resistor down there. And I think, is that all of them? I don't see any others anywhere else. That's nice, they gave me one extra, just in case I screw up. It's always a possibility. That red solder mask is kind of hard to look at on camera. Didn't realize that was going to be an issue here. Oh well, we'll just have to cope with it. It's not too bad in person. Those plated through holes are taking solder quite well. That's nice. And then just trim what's left of the leads off. 
I could have trimmed them shorter, but this gives me room to work with them. And I'm not going for ultra miniatur miniaturization here, so it really doesn't matter that much as long as you got enough lead to work with. I am being a little bit stingy with the solder. It doesn't have the classic tinted up look on it, but because those are pleated through holes, they are right full of solder, so it's holding nicely. Let's see what this resistor is. And those of you who can read colors can probably do it, but because I'm colorblind enough that I can't see them very well, I always check with the meter. That one is 98.4K, which I'm going to guess is actually 10K. Oh wait, that was 98K, wasn't it? The fuck am I thinking? Yeah, that's 100K. See, I'm trying to do the video thing and I'm just not paying attention to what I'm actually doing. Anyway, these ones down here are actually 10K, right? 9.9K, yeah. So those will go one there. And where's the other 10K? Where are you? There it is, up there. I'm just making this up as I go along, following along as, as it seems like a reasonable thing to do, and just having fun. This isn't rocket surgery here. This is just enjoying yourself building a kit. Let's put in those four diodes next. Three of them go over there and one down there. And whenever I see four diodes of the same type in a circuit, I often guess that they are going to be forming a full bridge rectifier. I could be wrong, but that's sort of the first assumption that you go with when you see that. It could be a couple of half bridge rectifiers or could just be steering voltages around making sure they don't go the wrong direction if i wasn't feeling so lazy tonight i would reverse engineer this put together schematic but that's not what it's about tonight it's just about chilling out with this kit and most of the magic in this thing is going to be being done inside that pic microcontroller in code anyway as for funsies, let's complete this little corner down here. We'll put the push button in, which I assume is uh, for testing, to tell it it's time to test the, uh, the crystal that's attached. Let's do capacitors next. There's four of these guys. 22 puff. There's one, two, three, one. Two, three. Did they give me an extra one? Oh, that'd be nice of them. I'm not going to throw them away, obviously. It's always good to have extra components kicking around, but... And the other two fixed capacitors, one's a 102 and one's a 104, which are again labeled on the board. Now that one is the... 104 and that one is the 102 102 being a thousand picofarads and 104 being 100 nano i guess while we're putting in capacitors let's put in the variable capacitor let's see the little variable capacitor symbol there capacitor with a line through it plug him in there like i am going to have to hold with one hand while uh, soldering with my other hand and holding my solder with my other other hand. This should be interesting. So that variable capacitor and this 22 picofarad capacitor are the load capacitors for the 20 meg crystal, which looks like yeah it is going to be clocking the PIC microcontroller so i'll drop him in there i'm actually going to hold him off the board a little bit just 
to give me a little bit of uh, room between the heat and the crystal itself. And the other thing that I'm going to be doing, this is something that I learned from a training course at Alcatel years and years and years ago. I'm going to trim the leads first, but I'm not going to trim the leads with this type of clipper because this type, when it snaps through the wire, it, according to the instructor at Alcatel, puts a shock wave, a mechanical shock into the lead and has the potential to harm the crystal. So I'm going to be using more of a scissors type cutting implement that shears the lead off rather than snapping it hard like that. And yeah, there is still a bit of a kick there, but it's not nearly as hard as this. I don't know if that's true, but that's what he told me. And that's what I've been doing throughout my career. And I haven't had a crystal break on me yet. So we'll just go with that, shall we? So again, I'm just using that capacitor lying on its side just for its leads as a spacer. Just to get that up a little bit off the board. I don't know whether it's critically important. But it's one of those things that doesn't hurt you any if you do it. I guess I will do the transistors next. Again, all three of them are different. So that one is the 9018. So it goes over here and... Flat side goes that way, paying attention this time so I don't get it wrong. Some really simple circuits you can get away with doing it wrong and you can rescue yourself later. But it's not a good practice. It's nice to get them right the first time. This transistor is a 7550A, which goes there. And this time the flat side is down. And the third transistor, if we can trust the board, should be a 9014. And it is. That is good. I'd hate to have to uh, cross-reference and figure it out and steal something from my bag of tricks. Although you never know, and that's one of the good reasons to have just a stockpile of your own parts, just in case. I guess we'll throw in this three pin socket over here, which I'm guessing is for the crystal under test. One pin goes to ground and one pin goes to this transistor and this capacitor. Uh, probably the base of that transistor. So yeah, that makes sense for that to be for the device under test. I'm going to need going to use a little bit of blue tack to hold it in place because I'm tired of burning my fingers. This is supposed to be about having fun. Burning your fingers isn't fun. Okay, I guess we can put the chip socket in. The socket for the PIC microcontroller. And of course, the socket's been bent in transit because that just happens with these kits. They're packaged as cheap as possible, so they're just in a plastic bag. At least this one was a static bag, anti-static bag. Come on, line up, you. Start with one corner, pop it in place. Start with the opposite corner. Push it in place from the other side and just refill it. There. Now I can peel the blue tack off and just go to town on soldering. Power socket takes a little bit more heat because there's a bit more metal behind it. That's okay, just linger for an extra second. Good, good. I guess I should put some header pins on there, but there weren't any pins in the kit. But that is the kind of thing that most of us accumulate fairly quickly. Snip off four of those guys, just that easy. There we go. I'll try not to burn my fingers again. Okay, is that on there straight? Yes, it actually is. Cool. And I can still read the legend on the pins. Nice. So, I've been avoiding it. 
but now it is time to do the seven segment LEDs. Peel off the protective film. No music this time. And uh, straighten the pins. Even though they were in a foam block, the pins still got bent somehow. Wild. Get in there, you. There we go. I think I'm going to put them all in at once so that they're all nice and straight together. The pins are wonked enough that they are actually holding in place, so that's good. I don't have to worry about them shifting. So like any other multi-pin part, I'm just going to solder two corner pins and then push down against the face of it and reflow those. Hear that little snap? That's got it nice and tight to the board. So do two more corners to lock it in place. And I'll go on to the next one and just do all of them like that to get them seated and then I'll finish up the soldering on all the other pins on them. And there, I think that is all of the soldering on this kit. The only thing left to do is put in this chip, which has one pin horribly wonked. But I think with just a little bit of gentle persuasion, get it like that. And then I'll use Larry's fancy custom chip pin aligner tool here. And that should just drop right in there, I think, I think. Are all the pins in place? Yes, and the notch is at that end. You still see the notch on the silk screen, so that's right. So we'll just do a sanity check. The diodes are all in the right orientation. That matches its silk screen. That diode is oriented with the band that way. Crystal is there, upside down to just annoy all the pedants. Uh, this transistor matches its silk screen. This one matches its silk screen. 322 picofarad capacitors are in the right spots. 102 capacitor is 102, and that's the 104. Okay, I think it is ready to rock and roll. Now, I still don't know how exactly to use this guy. I didn't pay attention. I didn't look up anyone else's videos. Like I said, I saw Julian Eilert build one many years ago, but I haven't seen the video since, and that's intentional, because I want to figure this out on my own. That's where the fun is, right? So that DC jack is not the standard 5.2 millimeter that we use for everything else. But fortunately, in my box of miscellaneous, I have this which i think is the right size where'd that come from i don't know i just cut it off the end of something i'm going to verify that my polarity is correct and i do have five volts center positive that's good so now then we'll plug it in and see what happens it lights up that's a good start i thought i had a bunch more crystals around here but all i can find is these 16 meg crystals which are you know, what you need for building an Arduino Uno type thing or clocking a microcontroller. Plug that in down there. Plug in there. And it says 16.064. So digging through my box of kits, I have one other kit that has a crystal in it. And I'm hoping that it's a different frequency than that 16 megs. But we'll see right away here. Because this is a DIY Arduino kit. So it could be a 16 meg crystal. Oh no, it's an 8. Okay. That's good. That'll give this guy something else to work with. 8.0656. Okay. I mean, it's not perfect, but uh, meg hundreds of K. It's like, what, 65K out? And it's close enough for clocking a microcontroller. I wouldn't want to use that for a transmitter frequency reference. It should be bang on. So this thing also claims to be a frequency counter. All right, so I've got a 10 kilohertz square wave coming out of this guy. 
and we'll see what it says up here that's not even close so it occurs to me that it's going to be using this 20 meg crystal as a reference to clock this guy and we haven't tuned that crystal yet but how do we tune that crystal to calibrate it i mean obviously using the variable capacitor but we need to be able to measure it with another frequency counter so this is always a problem. How do you calibrate something without a piece of test equipment that's at least as accurate or better? I am going to try and use my old analog tectonics oscilloscope, which has more than enough bandwidth to do it, but I can't get a super stable um, reading on it, as you can see here. I mean, that, I've got my cursor set for 20 meg, and that is pretty damn close. I think I want to tune it a little bit down. Oh, that's interesting. What happens if I tune it for peak oscillation? This is so twitchy, but I think... I've got it pretty close. I'm not sure why that is bouncing all over the place like that. I've got pretty good amplitude. I don't know, this is not precise enough. But I think I can get in the ballpark anyways. Let's just go back to putting an actual crystal in and see what this thing will measure. So that's about the closest that I can get that to 20 megahertz. And if we measure a 16 meg crystal over here, 16.064. This would be better if I had a real frequency counter to calibrate this thing with. But of course, I don't have one. So I suppose I could borrow one from work, but I'm not going to go to all that effort. The main thing, I think, with this is that it tells you that your crystal works and you're in the ballpark. I don't think it is designed for calibrating crystals. I could be wrong. I could be just uh, just trying to make myself feel better. But I think that will be the main use of this, just as a go-no-go -no -go for crystals. Especially if I'm salvaging them from something. You know, I do tend to salvage parts from time to time. But I think that will do it for today. I've uh, got what I wanted out of this, which was the fun of assembling it and seeing it run for the first time. Um, is it a useful piece of test equipment? Well, without some way of calibrating it initially, I don't know. Um, but as a go, no go indicator, I think it's probably going to be a useful thing. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, as always questions and comments down below in the comments section. I'll talk to you later.